I'm not sure whether life has shaped my world of football as much as football shaped my life. The game itself, more than anything, has taught me how to compete. 96 power kick! Compete for inches! And how to prepare. Don't come out here and wait three or four periods now to realize this is a National Football League and we're after a championship. And how to sustain. How about something here? Get something going! The work and the effort and the emotions that go into it, it's amazing. How do you deal with success? This is fun, Steve Young. How do you deal with failure? Holy God. How do you deal with the ups and downs? The emotional mood swings? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Uh. What? All right. All right. Sometimes we handle it properly, and sometimes we lose it. You know, it's great to have long-range goals to win the Super Bowl, but be willing to do those little things day in and day out, the attention to detail, the hard work, the dedication. That's what gets you there at the end of the year. Nice, Sam. You had that Stick face out, right in his mustache. Stick Good out. job. Until you're put in that arena. Well, boy, we just look lethargic. When you know the people are counting on Come you. Come on now, we got to get a tempo about us. Got to get a tempo about us. You find out whether you can handle the pressure whether you can keep the discipline and the, the thought process intact, or whether you're going to give in to the emotion. Now, you're not going to help us if you don't no. think. They're drawing you into a game you don't want to play, and look what it's doing to us. Don't let them beat you that way. That's where you really find out about yourself, really test your mettle. God almighty, don't play dumb. If you get five yards, that means you've earned five yards. If you're on the three-yard line and it's fourth down and you got to get a touchdown, if you can earn it, then you're going to get it. And I don't think there's anything in the world better than you being able to get what you earn. If you deserve to win, you're probably going to win. If you don't deserve to win, the other guy's going to win. It just strips you bare. It tests you totally. Oh, oh. You're laid to bear to yourself. You'll know yourself better when you come off that field. Football taught me that this is what you got to do. You got to act. If you're doing something and you know it's right, stand on it. Don't let nothing turn you around. Stand. And then when you get whipped and beat and whatever, continue to stand. Because some way, somehow, somewhere down the line, right will win out. Just like truth will always come to the top. Don't ever quit. No matter if somebody has, if you have the worst day of your whole life, somebody kills you. You remember that and you, you put a notch in there and say, I'm going to get better and I'm going to get better and I'm going to beat him someday. They said I was uh, too short. Said I was five foot ten with a three inch half row. And you know, it was always some guy said I was too small, too slow, too this and that. But then you believe in yourself and you can do it. Daddy, daddy. <laughs> I didn't know how far I could push myself. God, dog, oh, you right with oh. oh. I didn't know how, how tough I am. Put your ass on the ground next time, Bubba. Guaranteed. You have to trust other people. I'm here to play today. I'm here to help you. I'm here together. Really makes you dig into it about just about every emotion that you have as a person. I know it taught me to know when I'm wrong, to, to admit when I'm wrong, you know. I know as a man, you think, oh, I'm never wrong. But it really taught me as a man that, you know, admit you can uh, say sorry or, hey, it's my fault. I didn't do that right. It taught me those things. I think the NFL is a big melting pot of people from different backgrounds, people from different, you know, styles of how they go about things. And you believe in people that you've never known in your whole life and having a trust with them and a bond with them. I think it draws you closer and makes you a more well-rounded person. Come on, Joe. do the same thing we did all year. Let's rock. It's our, it's our game right now. It's our game. 
You learn how to deal under pressure. You learn who can and who can't, what to look for. Pressure is the greatest thing. I love it. There's no substitute for it because it brings out the best and the worst in people. Limits that you don't even know you have or even exist, you find out about. Come on, man! Yes! It's ours, baby! It is our destiny! If a team is on a 12-play drive and they're driving down the field and you're, you're tired and you're, your body's telling you, oh, I can't go another step, I can't do this. Now's the time, baby, now's the time. It's mind over matter at that point. You're like, I can, I can, I can, I can. All of a sudden, you make a big play and you win a football game. Those are the lessons that you kind of learn. See, we're judged weekly. You know, there's not a lot of occupations that are judged as hard and that so many people are able to witness as far as clean cut, I was successful or I was a failure. It's made me into a person that now that I can say I'm proud of. It just gonna make you stronger. Every good man I know been through something. It'll beat you down. It'll get you down to a point where you think you, you're no good. I mean, you're, you want to quit, you want to give up. And then it will reward you to the point that it can't feel any better. You know, since I was seven or eight years old, I've been part of football all my life, every year. I have never, that I can remember, ever had a year without a football season. I don't know if it's taught me anything about myself, but it's given me everything about myself. And so it's bigger than a lesson. Or anything it taught me, it's, football is my life. It's been a lesson in life. It taught me that if there's anything worth wanting in this world, there's a price to be paid for it. Get used to being tired and working hard. Push yourself. When it all boils down and when it's all over. Let's tackle, man! Tackle! Did you do the job well enough so that you could respect yourself and the people around you could respect the job you do? Hey! Love it! I love you guys! I love that! I am Joe Theismann football player. I always will be Joe Theismann football player. As I was putting on my equipment at pregame, it dawned on me for the last time ever in competition that I would be putting on my shoulder pads from the time that I'd started as a junior high school football player all the way through high school, through college, and 13 years as a professional. That was the last time that I was going to be doing something that I genuinely loved, and it was not going to be anymore. I think the thing that really hits you is that your locker with 12 years of accumulation is actually not that big and it only takes you about, I don't know, half an hour to clear out 12 years of experience. In every NFL career, there's a time and place where the clock strikes midnight. It can ring on a raucous podium or on a cold, lonely bench. But when the final bell tolls, the memories echo for a lifetime. You, know, you have this glorious uh, vision of the last game and you run out before the millions. My last game was at Bush Stadium. It was seven degrees. We were playing the Eagles and there were like 18,000 people in the stands because it was freezing to death. While Dan Deerdorf was victimized by a deep freeze, Turk Edwards never even had a chance to warm up. Turk Edwards, a Hall of Fame tackle with the Washington Redskins, uh, his career actually ended at a coin toss. As Turk planted to leave the field, his cleats got caught in the grass, he wrenched his knee and never played another down of football. My last pass, I overthrew Drew Pearson coming over the middle. But the last one that actually someone caught was, was Herb Scott, a, a lineman that we had. I was scrambling around, I was trying to throw the ball away, and I threw it at his ankle tops. I mean, he made a great catch. Of course, it was illegal. He was a lineman, and I don't know what he was thinking other than he hadn't caught a pass all year, and it was time to catch a pass. When the time came for Jim Brown to go, he got the heave ho. The Hall of Famer was ejected from his last regular season game, as was Buffalo Steve Tasker. Tasker has gone off the field. He's ejected from the game. Oh, what a, what a way.
way to end your career. I can't believe that the official would do that, Murph. As I was walking off the field, I went everything from laughing about it to being enraged. My teammates thought it was the greatest thing ever because that's, you gotta go, you gotta get thrown out of your last game. You're a legend now, that's the best. I had been sitting on the sidelines without my helmet and watching the game, I saw Bob Brown injured, so I ran in, I got in the huddle, and Gene Upshaw said, Mixie, you forgot your helmet. And I thought, oh man, no. After all these years, this is the way my career ends, a buffoon. Some leave the game with shattered pride. Others with battered bodies, but unbroken spirit. I remember the last game because I couldn't remember a lot of my left side of my body. And I remember Dr. Curlin coming up and sticking me with a little pen knife in the finger, and he said, Bert, you're out of this game till I can figure out what's going on with your neck. And I said, oh, Doc, it doesn't hurt. Take me out for something that hurts. So a hand, an arm, or, or leg going numb, as absurd as it may sound, didn't seem like a logical reason to come out of a football game. An athlete wants to be able to leave the game on his terms. Fran Tarkenton, after breaking his leg, went back and played one more season because he wanted to leave the game on his terms. I never had that opportunity. It's like the whole world's in slow motion. I can hear the sound of my leg breaking. Sound like two muzzled gunshots. To this day, 15 years later, I can lay in bed at night and I can feel the moisture on my back. I can see the faces around me. I can smell the smells. I can hear the crowds. I had reached a point in my life where I was a football star. In my own mind, I'd convinced myself I was the single most important thing in the world. On November 18, 1985, at approximately 10.35 p.m., a Joe Theismann passed on, and a new man started a new journey. So my last game was more than the end of a football career. It was the beginning of a new life. Legends die hard, and many hang on too long, destined to finish as a familiar face in an unfamiliar place. Yet for the countless careers that end with a whimper, there's one that goes out with a bang. Hall of Fame quarterback Norm Van Brocklin ended his career as a champion with the Philadelphia Eagles in 1960. And like the Dutchman, Denver's John Elway finished his career on a Rocky Mountain high. Eagle runs a quarterback draw, lunges to the goal line. He is in. Yeah! Touchdown, John Elway. Elway now is going to leave the game. His helmet is off, both arms extended in the air. For some days, I had planned to retire after the Super Bowl. No one knew it. I didn't want to distract the squad with it. I didn't want them to play one for Walsh. Back to throw, Montana. Stepped up, throws. It's very emotional. This is a tough moment in a way because was this the final game on the sideline for a great coach, Bill Walsh? I broke down in my son's arms. No one really understood completely why. And that's when I came apart. An emotional moment right now with the coach down here inside the locker room, Jack. Nothing can top going out as a champion, except maybe the Hollywood finish of Rocky Blyer. I can remember when we were introduced, coming onto that field, that last game. There was no emotion in the stands. It was kind of, we weren't going any place. Kansas City played very well. They had the lead, actually. But I do remember Bradshaw coming in and said, come on, guys, let's get it together. One last drive. And for some reason, it clicked. Well, all of a sudden, as we're kind of moving the ball and that clock's going down, the fans, I could hear from the field, pockets going offense, offense, offense. And at that time, Bradshaw, for some ungodly reason, decides to give me the ball like six times in a row. Now, he doesn't give me the ball six times in a game throughout my career, but at this moment in time, my last game, he decides to give me the ball six times, and we move the ball down the field. That offense, offense, turns into Rocky, 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 50 plus thousand people screaming. There's 35 seconds left on the clock, the ball snapped. 
guard pulls, I'm underneath behind him. Biggest hole I've seen in 12 years I've ever played this game. So I jump over the line, ball crosses. We win the game, 19 seconds on the clock. I figured that's the way to end a career. And so the bell tolls, signaling an end as well as a beginning with an indelible memory trapped somewhere in between. It's been a great time for me in the last 10 years playing here for the Green Bay Packers. I would just like to say it's been more than a game. It's been a way of life. Thank you.